third and five. And that stops the clock. I hate to speculate, but I think we may see him go back to the ground here. But they may decide, you know what, we need points. And that's what they decide. Scrambling. Anderson got a wide open man downfield. Caught. <laughs> I think shocked by how open he was was Ben Watts. He caught that and fell backwards. Uh, was not caught in stride. I think if he caught it in stride, he'd, he'd been striding into the end zone at this point in time. But nevertheless, that changes the look and the dynamic for the Potters, Dylan. They're now in business on their side of the 50, and I think uh, have to be encouraged by how wide open their receivers have been on the last couple of routes. So. Tucker Anderson really almost sold it like he was running and I think caused uh, Ben Watts to be open. Well, he's running for his life in that play. Anderson Great Bucks penetration Anderson by Anderson Zach Ritter. Uh, I beg your pardon. Great penetration there by Justin Triplett from Peak and then he had help but uh, Tucker Anderson had to eat that one for a four-yard loss, and we're going to have timeout call from by the Potters as they are at midfield with under a minute to go, and they've got to try to figure a way to manufacture some points before this half comes to an end. The offense has been getting yards. That's been the problem. It's been converting those yards into points. That's been the issue and resulting in a 15-point deficit here tonight. I'd like to thank tonight's MPTV crew and a, a special thanks uh, to Dylan for sitting alongside me this evening. Uh, but uh, we have the easy job, as I always say, uh, making things happen tonight. Our, um, Janet Stevens, Blake Hockstetler, Jeff Stevens, Haley Hockstetler, Bill Shook, Lynn Coverstone, and... I'm going to say her name. She left it off the list. Carol Jankowski. Um, thank you very much for your efforts to, to make the broadcast possible. Uh, I know that uh, I just kind of show up and talk. And There's an interesting fake play that the officials weren't happy with. Well, when a fake play it was a real play, yeah. but it was a deceptive play. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it was a fake play because the officials... Uh, Blew the whistle. So, um, They're basically trying to act like they were still in the huddle during their timeout. So well, and, out there. and, you know, a lot of times before a game, and I don't know if Coach Lyons did or not, if they're going to do something that looks really weird, um, I know having moved down here from Morris, which, you know, very successful football program over the year, a lot of times coaches would talk to the officials beforehand. They were... They, they like to throw some wrinkles and fake plays in, but you don't want to confuse the officials, and I think that's what happened there. There's no penalty, no anything. They just, I think the officials were confused. Therefore, there goes there, there goes that weapon in your arsenal. Anderson throws one. That's over everybody's head. Well defended. Uh, and now we're looking at third and long with 46 seconds. Third down and 14. Third and 14, 46 seconds remaining. I'd like to see the Potters pick something up here and continue to move towards the end zone. This field position right now is one that doesn't really justify a go for it on fourth down, depending on uh, how this third down. Well, comes absolutely. Hit, uh, it's, uh, it, yeah, would think. Just because Pekin has been kicking it up, picking it up in chunks, if they don't convert here, you may very well look at. You know, if they get 12 or 14 yards or inside the 40, I think that changes the dynamic. But at midfield, I think they'd be more inclined to punt. But yes. hopefully, we're going to be talking about a first down and them hurrying up to the line of scrimmage to get another playoff. Uh, officiating crew holding things up at this point in time. There's a couple of them. Conference over on the far sideline. We're going to go over and communicate with Pekin's coach. Anderson fakes. Got a man open. He's held. 
No flag. He, a great throw from Anderson. That was intended. It was intended for Whitaker. And Whitaker had a guy, you know, he, he draped on him a little bit. I mean, he was off him by the time the ball came to Clayton, but... Uh, I can't imagine that that helped. Yeah, it was number doesn't two. matter what I see. <laughs> Bryce Cannery on the coverage looked like he got his arm there a little early. He was a little wrapped. Yeah. As a matter of fact, he had it off him by the time the ball landed. But that uh, punt goes going to take a potter roll, but it looked off it, like it went off the side of his foot. Going to roll down inside the 30 to the, about the 27. Just 30 seconds remaining here. Hopefully the Potters can uh, do a good stop here. It would be interesting to see what Pekin has in mind. A lot of teams would be content to go into the locker room with a 21-6 lead, but Pekin's got to feel good about the way their defense has played after that initial Potter drive. They may take a few chances here. Figuring a worst-case scenario, if they turn over a long pass, it's as good as his punt. And, let their defense do the job, but they're going to take a knee and go the conservative route and say we're up by 15, we don't need any more. And the clock winds and uh, looks like they will not need to take another knee. We are going to turn things over to John Wheat and the public address and the band. Enjoy some halftime festivities. And we will come back with a minute or two before the second half to set the stage for you folks. Uh, enjoy halftime. Let's see the first half of play with the score picking 21 and Morton 6.
And ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the field the Morton High School Marching Band. protect our people from making wrong choices. The leaders of our community, the Committee of Elders, made a decision. The decision to go with sameness. We relinquished color and did away with differences. A life without colour, pain, or past. But now I can see. And things could be different. There could be colours. And all that goes beyond. All that is elsewhere.
from the Morton High School Marching Band. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight the Morton High School dance team would like to invite you to take a trip through the Roaring Twenties with them. The freshmen will run the world representing the strong women fighting for the 19th Amendment. The sophomores lead us into the world of baseball with Babe Ruth and the Yankees, while the juniors working hard on Wall Street to pay the bills. Finishing up the evening will be the epic and glamorous senior flappers. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Morton High School dance team.
Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, the Morton High School cheerleaders. Gordon. I'm sitting alongside uh, Morton's 709 superintendent, Dr. Lindsay Hall. She agreed to give us a few minutes. I uh, asked her if she would come up and just talk a little bit about the new facilities. This is the first MPTV broadcast in the new facilities. And just, uh, Dr. Hall, how is the school year going so, so far? And uh, comments uh, about this wonderful new facility we have here in our community. Well, we're having a great school year, and certainly the reopening and renovation of the outdoor facilities here at Morton High School and Carper Field have just been a wonderful community event and uh, we are just so happy to have been able to complete this project. We're about 99% finished. We need to put some markings on the track and get the tennis facility completed and uh, it'll be finished. But it's been uh, six months of construction, a lot of teamwork, a lot of communication but uh, the feedback from the community has been really, really positive, and certainly from our students. And uh, to have our stands filled like this is, is just wonderful. We didn't generally see this with the, the previous facility, which was starting to show its age a little bit. It, it most certainly was. It most certainly was. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, Sunday night. Uh, you, you know, not to be forgotten, uh, off in the distance here, another important part of the new facility. Certainly. Part of our athletic facility renovations was the moving of the tennis courts to the south side of the stadium, and we added four courts, so we have a total of eight, and uh, all lighted, 
and a, a nice uh, facility in the center of the tennis courts for concessions and then some upstairs viewing where you can see all eight courts for the coaches. This will really enhance our ability to finally host some tournaments and uh, larger competitions. But before we do any of that, this Sunday evening at 5 o'clock will be the official dedication of the facility is the Joel Stanfield Tennis Complex. And uh, it's with heavy hearts that we're dedicating it to Coach Stanfield, who, as we know, passed away very unexpectedly in August of 2014. But we've got a number of uh, beautiful recognitions for Coach Stanfield, and it will be a very nice ceremony. And it's open to the public, and we encourage people to, to come out and uh, enjoy that and, and uh, remember Coach Stanfield. Then on uh, Saturday, the 10th of October, we're going to be hosting the Middle Line Eye Girls Conference Tournament, first big tournament, and we're, we're really, really pleased to be able to do that on the brand new courts. Oh, that's fantastic, and I know uh, a, a nice viewing stand for mm -hmm. Mr. Nevor, and, and, you know, the, I always enjoy the, the music area, and I noticed when I walked up to the field, you know, a nice... Uh, additional practice facility for the band and obviously the advantage of the turf field is you don't have to worry about uh, the wear and tear on, on the grass. Well the, the facility has really become a multi-use facility with uh, a, a grass field certainly we were concerned about preserving the field for football games and that limited its use but with the artificial field we're able to really expand the use of this well beyond football certainly for our band practices, for band competition, and for the daily teaching of physical education. Then we also have a practice field, a grass practice field for our band, and uh, we've been able to get Mr. Nevor out of the scissor lift and uh, into a stable band tower. We're happy for that, and I'm sure he's pleased with that as well. And uh, we just need to get some, some grass growing in there, and then that area uh, will be fully functional probably by springtime. So... It's just represented a, a, an expansion of the use so that it's just much more accessible to all of our students and, and our community as well. Well, and as we talk, a nice uh, pass from Tucker Anderson to Brennan Burns. The Potters are looking to establish some momentum here in the second half. Anything else you'd like the community to be aware of? I know you've expressed your appreciation in, in many ways uh, for the support throughout the the course of this process. Anything else you'd like to share? Well, certainly credit is due to uh, Stark Excavating and all the subcontractors who worked so hard on this, and, and uh, we battled 15 inches of rain in, in June and July. And also compliments to Farnsworth Group, the architects that we worked with, and again, just a, a real team effort to do a project of this magnitude in such a short period of time, but also be faced with the delays that Mother Nature served up to us this summer. It was, it was really quite an accomplishment. So, uh, And, of course, thank you to our, our community and all the support that we have for uh, Morton Potter activities and athletics and for just the Morton schools in general. It's a, it is a great place to serve as superintendent, and I'm honored to do so. Well, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate your spending a few minutes with us. Thanks, and Brian. Let's root them on to victory. You bet. Go Potters. Whitaker with a nine-yard pickup, and the Potters are moving the ball methodically down the field. Whatever was discussed at halftime is working as the Potters, uh, Dylan, uh, have mounted a nice drive to start the second half. Yeah, offense definitely had to be talked about in halftime because they've come out and just uh, a great start here. They're in uh, working on getting into the red zone here on their first drive out of half and knocking on the door here. Pitches around left side, trying to find a corner and struggling to do so. Was Whitaker. We'll see where they mark him out. Maybe a small gain. Looks like he probably just got back to the line of scrimmage. We talked about in the first half was, uh, you know, the yards are great, but it's the points on the board we really, really need, and hopefully we can get a few here. Well, the Potter's uh, mixing it up, a little run, a little pass on this drive. Wanted to give Dr. Hall the opportunity to come in and, and talk about the new facility as this is our first broadcast in the new facility with uh, announcers. And there is a run up the middle from Michael picking up where he left off in the first half. 
carrying several Pekin defenders with him, nine yards on that pickup. Tucker Anderson gets the play. Official Officials timeout calling a timeout. They're going to actually measure and decide it's close enough. Potters would be happy, I'm sure, to work with a fresh set of downs on this third and short situation, although uh, I think a handoff to Michael up the middle has yielded nothing less than a yard all night. They are, in fact, about six inches short, which is right where they had the third down marker indicated on the other side. Crowd getting into it now here. This would be a huge score for the Potters to get them right back in this game. Give is up the middle to Michael. He certainly got the yardage he needed. Plus one or two more. We'll see where they mark him down at. Right up the middle. He's finally stopped at the 17 yard line. Down at the 17. Picked up two. Needed six inches. So the drive continues and the clock winds. Pen and paper out at phone at home, folks. I'm going to share some dates with you here that you may want to mark your calendars for. Morton calls timeout. I'll have an opportunity to do that right now. The vocal music department is preparing for their first concert on Monday, October 19th at 7 p.m. at the District Auditorium. Of course, a variety of great programs throughout the year, but Monday, October 19th, 7 p.m. at the District Auditorium will be their first fall play this year. Always a wonderful job from the folks uh, in that department at the high school. It will be It's a Wonderful Life on November 13th, 14th, and 15th. The 13th and 14th, that will be at 7.30 p.m. November 15th will be a 3 o'clock matinee performance. And that will be in the Birth of Frank Auditorium. Those are just $5 a ticket. We've talked about golf. We've talked about football. The varsity soccer team is having another strong season as they look to repeat as middle I and conference champions. They have a 6-5 and five start, and they play in a tough tournament in St. Louis this weekend. And we're going to go back to football for now. It's Anderson back under center after that timeout. Give us left side. And churning ahead for a handful of yards, Clayton Whitaker. Nice first down pick out. About five of the ten needed for a first down on that one carry. Second and five for the Potters. More importantly, we're in the red zone. And Pekin hasn't really been able to stop either Whitaker or Andrew Michael. And here just 12 yards out. It's looking pretty good here for the Potters. We're going to go left with it, and he's going to keep it himself, Tucker Anderson is. He had the pitch option. He wisely kept it, and they are down knocking on the door after that keeper picked up about 10 on that one. I will finish my soccer spiel. Coach Tori DeLong and the Potters will be down at the the uh, Gateway City Soccer Classic in St. Louis this weekend. Their next home opportunity sees the, the Potters will be uh, their home matches against Canton on Tuesday, October 6th at 7 p.m. And 
Anderson's going to give on the right side to Michael. And no signal from the officials. Number 12, Andrew Michael near the goal line. He Close. picked up one and a, looks like uh, uh, one and uh, seven eights. <laughs> Basically touching the uh, yeah, yeah. end zone right there. From, from our perspective, the ball is sitting on the goal line. Of course, uh, we're, we're sitting high and on the wrong side of it. So uh, just inches to go for the Potters here. They're going to try the right side again with Michael, and he's in easily. Great job by the Potter line, creating a space. Uh, Michael really not touched until he was one or two yards into the end zone there, and the Potters have closed the deficit to 21-12. I would imagine we'll see a two-point conversion attempt here. We talked about earlier that statement drive for the defense of the Potters. This was definitely that statement drive for the offense side of the ball. Coming right out of halftime, marching down the field and getting this game close enough to where we can perhaps pull this upset off. Potters consuming 5 minutes and 21 seconds on that drive. And they're going to line the ball up on the left hash for this two-point conversion. And they send Whitaker in motion to the right and back to throw. And that conversion is good from Anderson. Anderson, a uh, quick three-step drop. And he finds Ben Watts in the end zone. And the Potters are within a touchdown and an extra point in this one. That was just a beautiful route run by Ben Watts there. A quick slant route coming over and over the middle. And Anderson, a beautiful throw from him. Put it right into his chest. And Watts was able to come away with it. You were able to enjoy the dance team at halftime. They have brought home a, a uh, superior trophy from summer camp. Drill down. And I need to shuffle some papers so I can read more to you about the dance team. Drill down trophy leadership award and drill down queen trophy. Warren girls tennis team coached by Mr. Pat Lauder is off to a 4-0 start and are currently in first place 4-0 in the middle line. I sorry, first place in the middle line. I 8 and 3 overall. Varsity volleyball team is 14 and 5. Off to a good start. Lots of success for Potter's Athletics as well. 14-5 overall and currently uh, 7-1 in the conference, which puts them in a tie for first place. Potters will kick. We'll talk about some other sports and activities. Bailey's been squibbing all night. He continues to do so. That one bounces around, fielded at the 20. And here's a strong return with an opening right up the middle by somebody's name who is no stranger to those of you who've been listening all night. Julian Hill straight up the gut with that one in great old position for Pekin. I hope the Potters can hold strong here. Very discouraging to give up that kind of field position after that fantastic drive. Boy, Julian Hill really turned on the Jets to shot right up the middle. And how about... How about Blake Bailey saving two touchdowns here almost with his, uh, his tackling he there? Has had, uh, he's had to do that twice this evening. No. A lot of kickers shy away from that, but Blake up to the task this evening. There's a fake to the man in motion and a keeper down the left sideline. Scampers Nick Campbell. And they set that play up in the first half, as you've talked about already, Dylan. They've they've gone around the outside. That time they just went with the fake to the man in motion. And Campbell went left with it. There's Picked up 17. Quick offense again there. Just, you know, we get a touchdown momentum seemingly on our side and peaking quickly taking away and here. And they're, they're playing rapidly as well. They, they have definitely upped the tempo. I think they understand they have a, a definite advantage in depth as we alluded to at the uh, pregame comments. You, know, you just have to hope that the Potters are uh, 
going to be up to the task here as time wears on the clock. On the first down, we came into this game knowing Sebastian Fuller was going to have a good game. Then we quickly discovered Julian Hill. I think we're also discovering Nick Campbell as a rushing threat, too. He's got over 50 yards just rushing the quarterback. A lot of misdirection from Pekin. Campbell on a design keep there as well, but that goes nowhere. Um, he ran straight up the gut and found nothing. Lucky to get back to the... John Wheat's calling a short loss, and he's sitting further down the field to me, so I'll go with John's call. Looking to the sideline, their play clock is down to five. But they will get it off, it looks like, with two seconds to spare. They're looking to throw, and they are swarmed instead. Several potters there. Down behind the line of scrimmage. To greet him. One of them being Michael. Brandon Johnson also present on that one. Really a huge play right there as we were looking at third down, and now it's fourth right now, and they're at the 30, so not exactly field goal position right now. That's a, that's a changes the way you look at things. Gabe Whalen, I think, also had his hands, and there were three potters, and I apologize if it wasn't Gabe, but wanted to throw Gabe's name out there. I believe it was him that was the other potter involved in that tackle. Good, good penetration defensively. See if we can duplicate that. We've got some run, uh, linebackers dropping back into coverage. Got flags flying. We got people moving when they're not supposed to, and they have on white uniforms. Pekin will go from fourth and long to fourth and longer, which is good for the Potters, particularly after that long kick return. Yeah, Pekin's offense is moving uh, the wrong way at the wrong time. Pekin at the 35. They need to get down to about the 12 for a first down. So. They're going to pass it and open, but overthrown and off the mark. Julian Hill was open. Nick Campbell just could not find him. So the Potters will take over on downs. The defense getting it done when they needed to. Cross country team will be in action tomorrow at the Peoria Invitational. They're off to a good start. The Coached by Joel Zer, Dave Getz, and Joe Zeller. The boys' team has a record of 3-3, three and 1-3 three, one and three in the conference. The girls' team is 4-2, and 2-2 two, two and two in the conference, and has brought home hardware from the Galesburg Invitation and Dunlap Invite. The Dragons have called timeout, which give me a little more time to talk to you about the cross country team. They uh, we have a timeout on the field. Uh, timeout taken by Pekin. Uh, very good opportunity to uh, ad advance the state, but we'll compete in a very tough sectional in a few weeks. But uh, the cross country uh, ladies cross country team uh, off to a perfect start with. Uh, couple of uh, second place finishes as I said in the Dunlap and Galesburg Invitationals. Um, Megan Moreno, a freshman runner for the Lady Potters, won the individual championship at the East Peoria Invitational last week and uh, that surprised a, a, a lot of people. Megan a, a fine young runner and uh, a number of freshmen uh, um, contributing on the Lady Potter cross country team. JV and varsity cheerleading squads had a fabulous beginning of the year, and we'll talk a little about that after this play. Give us left side to Michael. Not a whole lot going there. The Potters will look at a second and nine situation. This summer they attended the cheerleaders attended the UCA cheer camp at Illinois State. And where they received the following awards: 2015 Camp Champions, Game Day Champions. Top award for Extreme Routine, 2015 Overall Champions, and Leadership Award voted by uh, voted on by all other squads at the camp. So congratulations to them. They are coached by Jenna Grin and Christy Gudeman. Give us up the middle. 
Finding the yardage a little harder to go by. Andrew Michael again with the carry up near the 40-yard line. It's going to be third down and five for the Potters. Potters break huddle. Third and five. Big, big play here for the Potters. Fake the handoff. Anderson's got a man open, but nice defensive effort. He was looking for Brennan Burns, but uh, that play was a diving knockdown. Madison Carr got a, Mason Carr got a hand on that, and the Potters are going to look at a punt. Rather than a first down, good good play by Carr to break that one up. I thought we had a completion going there. It was an extremely athletic play there by Carr. Instead, we will watch Blake Bailey punt. The whistles and flags are not infrequent. Potters are going to get penalized this time, move the other way. Twenty-one fourteen, Pekin leads this one. 2.45 to go on the third. Now we're going to get the Bailey punt. It is a high end over end kick. It's going to bounce directly sideways. And it will be down on the Approximately the 41. We have another flag on the field. A late flag at that. It was. Well, somebody with some unnecessary contact there would be my guess, and we'll see who they're going to call that one on. I don't know if I heard correctly, but I think he may have said illegal block in the back. No, we're getting a hold. I didn't hear correctly. <laughs> At least if I saw the signal correctly, is that what you picked up on a yeah, holding? Yeah, it looked like a hold there. And, and if I'm not mistaken, it was holding on the Potters. Yeah. So that will once again give Pekin better field position than you'd certainly like them to start with. But they are uh, going to start right at midfield after the official marked that one off. Crowd quite raucous this evening, back and forth. They yeah. Speaking of Morton students. It's an intense game. It has been. And I think uh, the Potter is surprising a lot of people, uh, playing as well as you mentioned. Uh, Pekin coming off a couple of, of steam rollings. Mm -hmm. And you look at the Potters at 0 5, and you think, well, okay, you know, this is going to be an easy one. The Potter has proven to anything but up until this point in time. More laundry. Well, if you were wanting to get home early, this is not your game. Well, yeah, going back to that, uh, Pekin came in not allowing an offensive touchdown over the past two weeks, and then more in first drive, that's exactly what they did. So, I mean, the confidence is high for the Potters right now, and they're only a touchdown down. First and 15 for Pekin. And guess what? <laughs> well, the hankies are flying again. And Beacon's going backwards. And you have to believe that uh, well, one of the things that they will be talking about is cleaning things up and going forward. Really, it's been penalties that have kept this game close, I believe, Pekin, it's really hindered them this, throughout this contest. I believe I misspoke it. I'm looking at a schedule. Quincy High School is hosting the Gateway City Classic where the boys' varsity soccer team will be this weekend. The client's down in front of me. But you're absolutely right. I mean, it, it, 
Pagans hurting themselves, and we appreciate that. Number 19, Quick scamper Fuller with the carry from the Fuller. Five. He made back seven of that, so, well, maybe five of that. Went from second first and 20 to second and 15. It was just five. Two five-yard penalties per send back. There's a quick throw. Oh, and he's annihilated, and that's a live ball. Potter's had a shot at it. Whalen was out there, but it looks like uh, that ball came flying out of the hands of Julian Hill. He was blown up on the catch, but it looks like in the process of of uh, doing the blowing up, Sam Rodeguero, uh hurt himself a little bit. They're going to get him off the field and take a look at him. He's nursing a leg. Wow. But Pekin continues to go backwards. That play resulting in after the fumble recovery, a 14-yard loss. That's just a quick, it was a forward pass. It was not a lateral uh, behind the line of scrimmage. And Julian Hill probably wishes he just let that ball go to the turf. Well, you could see that coming. I mean, it was Sam Rodero just saw that coming the whole way, read it perfectly, and laid a huge hit. And here's what you didn't want to see on third and long. going to be a 69-yard touchdown scamper. I am looking for a flag and not finding one. Nick Campbell with a 69-yard score. The Potters doing everything right, you know, sending them backwards, and the big play, once again, bites them. Well, we talked about that tandem, Sebastian Fuller and Julian Hill, but you can't count out Nick Campbell. He's got over 100, and he's got 120 rushing yards right now in that touchdown on that 69-yard scamper. Shea Gozman sets up for the extra point, trying to make this a 28-14 ball game. And he does. So Beacon has now doubled up the Potters with 134 remaining in the third. Only hope that the Potters' offensive momentum continues and they're able to answer back. It's definitely time to respond. Two touchdown game, closing out the third quarter right here. Hoping for a score, definitely from the Potters. I remind our viewers that uh, Morton is now on a co-op swim team. We have girls swimming going on right now. They co-op with Washington and East Peoria High Schools. Practice at five points in Washington. Encourage you to uh, support your Lady Potter swimmers. Well, a big possession. Coming up for the Potters. Red key back deep as he has been all night. I'm going to let that one bounce. Fields it on the 11. Going to try to work the right side. He finds a bit of an opening. Tackled by shoestrings as he tried to make a burst around the outside. But a good. With the kickoff return. Uh, beg your pardon, I read that number wrong. That was uh, the freshman Jarrett Kreider on the return. Jarrett doing a nifty line. job working his way up the right sideline, but uh, shoestring tackle got him before he was able to really get things revving up. Return that out to the 27 for the Potters. Still a good start to the drive here. You know, this is the drive you really want to respond to Pekin's last touchdown, and that's a great, great way to start it from the freshman Jarrett Kreider. on the right hash mark. They will hand it straight up the middle and go straight forward with it with the type of success we've been watching 
for the better part of the evening. Four or five yards on first down. Looks like maybe even six on that one. Second and four for the Potters. Straight up the middle to, to, uh, to Michael. Tripped up after he is tripped up line. after he's got first down yardage. Potter's picking up where they left down. off on that first drive, Dylan. And yeah, that's what they have to realize. They have time. It's two touchdowns, a two touchdown game, but we're about to got about 40 seconds left here in the third. There's still another 12 minutes. Uh, you know, they've been methodically running the ball for five to six yards per play, and it's been working, and that's what they got to keep working on. Anderson looks like he may be changing the play as he yells out to his receivers. Straight ahead, they go with it. Try the left side this time. Andrew that was Michael again. Andrew Michael, a busy young man this evening, picks up about four. Hope you were able to enjoy the broadcast of the Halftime festivities, which of course include the marching band, the current 10 time state, or 10 time class 2A state champions of Illinois, Bands of America Super Regional Class Champion, National Semi Finalist. Great job, as always, by the band. And I will share with you as we have a timeout on the field that the first orchestra concert. Um, Morton blessed with not only a fantastic marching band, but an absolutely terrific orchestra. Their first concert will be on Tuesday, October 20th at 7 p.m. And it is Vault Disney. With a compilation of Disney music. I encourage you to get out and take advantage of the wonderful uh, fine arts programs here at the high school. What I've really been impressed with uh, head coach Eric Lyons, he's been mixing up, you know, running not very frequently with passing, but when he does, they've been open. And, you know, quarterback Tucker Anderson has done a great job of finding those open receivers. And, you know, I just, think that's really the key for this fourth quarter. Just enough variety as you set the stage for the fourth. You know, the Potters have... You know, you, you don't ever want to say you're encouraged by being two touchdowns down, but, you know, we as we set the stage for this one, peaking a very good football team, the Potters improving, but still looking for their first win, and, and they're, they're in it. This game is far from over. We hope they can put together a drive here and, and uh, obviously come back and, and find a victory in homecoming, but uh, they're doing a good job of mixing up the plays, as you alluded to, and, when you run effectively, it just opens everything else up. You know? It's one of the things Coach Lyons and I talked about this afternoon. It, it, he really was hoping to get out and establish the run. And credit credit the offensive line and, and the running backs. They've done a good job with that this evening. There's a pitch right side. Down the sidelines, running over one defender. is Clayton Whitaker. Nice pickup for Whitaker on that third and five. He got close to 20. Potters on the 36 after that 20-yard pickup. He's really the X factor of his offense. I mean, we've been calling Andrew Michaels' number all game, but Caleb Whitaker's the leading touchdown scorer on the Potters, and, you know, he can really break loose. Whitaker listed at 5'11", 185. Kind of a nice uh, complement to one another are Whitaker and Michael. And Whitaker is going to go straight up the middle with that one. And he picks up a bunch more yards. Number two, Clayton Whitaker on the carry. 
Picked up more than 10. 25-yard line, another 11-yard pickup on that first down play. And as you alluded to, plenty of time left in this one. 10.47 remaining here in the fourth. The Potters trail by two touchdowns, but they are driving. Give is up the middle. Took me a minute to figure out if that was a fake or an yeah. actual handoff. It was a credit to Number Tucker two, Anderson for Whitaker. that. But that was Whitaker up the middle again. He picked up a chunk of about eight yards on that one. So we talked about fatigue and worried a little bit about that. The Potter's O line showing absolutely no signs of that at this point in time. I think another thing that counteracts that fatigue is this is probably the most poised 0-5 team I've seen in a while. They, you know, they're down by two touchdowns. And there's 10 minutes to go, but they are in control, and they're knocking on the door once again. There's a pitch around the outside and knocked out of bounds at the five-yard line. Whitaker getting the bulk of the carries on this one. Kind of change up possession for the Potters as they've been giving a lot of carries to Andrew Michael and Whitaker enjoying the bulk of the carries on this drive and both inside and out that one good for another first down the Potters on the five yard line That give is straight ahead to Michael, and he's going to pick up at least half of what he needed. Number 12, Andrew Michael. Goal line. It looks like line. more than that. He's down. He picked up about four. four. Potter's Please. inside second the one, down, and second and goal. goal. From the one. And Potter's just keep coming, and that, that's a credit to these young men. Dylan, as you alluded to it, their poise was, I believe, the word you used. and You don't see any kind of panic, and they're getting it done. Nifty inside tuck. Tucker Anderson finds an opening. He's into the end zone for one-yard touchdown. Potter's back within. A touchdown. Hopefully the extra point will be good here. He'll be back within seven. 9.02 remaining in this game. That's a great snap. Hold is good. The kick is good. We are at 28-21. We uh, of the team set up for kickoff. I'd like to acknowledge the homecoming court. They were announced in the pregame. Freshman attendants, Lindsey Brewer, daughter of John and Denise Brewer, and Ian, I'm sorry, Isaac Schaff, son of Chris and Tammy Schaff. Sophomore attendants, Caroline Woodmancy, daughter of Ty and Tammy Woodmancy, and Tommy Cool, son of Mike and Michelle Cool. Junior attendants, Emily Heim, daughter of Andreas and Julie Heim. Matt Bailey, son of Robert and Stacy Bailey. Senior attendants, Maddie Day, daughter of Brett and Kim Day. John Marks, son of Brad and Tina Marks. The queen is McKenna Howard. She is a daughter of Stacy and Rhonda Howard. And the homecoming king, Jacob Urban. Jacob is the son of Rex and Annette Urban. Kids have a good time at the dance tomorrow. Hopefully they can be celebrating a Potter victory tonight. It's a bunch kick. Unfortunately, they did not catch Pekin off guard. A um, little deception tried there, but uh, it did not work. Rolled a little too far and a little too fast, and it was covered up by... Colton Reeder, 
for Pekin. Kind of an unusual look at an onside there. I, I like the gutsy call there because, uh, you know, if we got it, that would have been huge. But now you set up Pekin with great field position, and they could very well extend this lead once again to two touchdowns right here. Well, we'll hope the defense can uh, get a stop and be a nice time for an interception, but that's hard to do when they keep it on the ground or they're all conference running back. Fuller picks up three on a first down carry. 19, and down to the 47 from the 50. At the 47 yard line, a gain of four, second down and six. Give him four on that carry, six yards to go for the first. And this is where you hope the Potters can really step up. They're going to send in motion. That's the fake. We've seen that play a handful of times tonight and going straight ahead with it rather than deciding to go left end. Number eight, Nick Campbell. Right up Nick Campbell on the keeper. I'm so, uh, somewhat surprised at going straight ahead. They have not had as much success going straight ahead as they have around the end with that particular play. I really think Morton has done a great job uh, during halftime making adjustments to you know, dealing with three offensive weapons that Pete can have now because I believe Sebastian Fuller has been quiet here in this second half. Uh, we have not called his name anywhere near as much. But I will call it now, and I will tell you he picked up enough for the first down. It was only a one-and-a-half, two-yard carry, but he only needed one. Sebastian Fuller down to the 40-yard line, a gain of two. Again, we keep going back to timing. We're still you know, a little under eight minutes on the clock. You can allow a score here, but definitely do not want to. Well, and, uh, you know, with the way Morton has been scoring tonight, it's not in a hurry, so you do start to look at that clock and think a stop would be key, but instead we're going to see no flags and a touchdown scamper from Sebastian Fuller and... Uh, we long ago lost track of his yardage, I think, Dylan. But it would not surprise me to know he is well over 200, if not on his way to the 300-yard mark tonight. With a pair of touchdowns as well to his resume. So if you learned anything on your first broadcast, you learned as soon as you say something about containing the opponent. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think you heard us. Uh. <laughs> Fuller in from 40 yards out. That kick looks good and is good. Pekin's lead back yeah, to two touchdowns, 35-21. Morton will go back to work here again on offense. And I would like to thank once again everybody working behind the scenes tonight to make this broadcast possible. That would include Carol Jankowski, Janet Stevens, Blake Hochstetler, Jeff Stevens, Haley Hochstetler, Bill Shook, and Lynn Coverstone. Thank you again to the MPTV crew for your help with tonight's broadcast. It is a beautiful fall evening. The wind has died down. The flags are virtually still at this point in time. It is cool and crisp. football weather and we've had a pretty good game tonight um, to enjoy Kreider back for the Potters he awaits the kick from Shea Gozman this one is going to go down the sideline as many of them have and it is fielded and returned by Patrick Retke, I believe. Potters in decent field position as they will start this drive from the 26. Morton will start this possession first and 10 from the This is only the second time this season Morton has put up more than 14 points on the board. So, I mean. Well, I think there's a lot of positives to take from this one. Exactly. You know, the interesting thing we're going to look at here is uh, trailing by two, are we going to see the ball in the air a little bit more than what we have? But that's a give straight up the gut, and Pekin says, nah, not, not on this one. 
That is probably the, the best Number stop five, I have seen Michael. in the middle line of scrimmage of a handoff to Andrew Michael. He got nothing no on that on one. Play, second down and 10 from the 26. Pekin played in a little bit more of a hurry up mode on their last drive and I think we're gonna see the same thing out of, uh, out of Morton out of necessity at this point in time obviously spinning and picking up four or five on that carry Michael it was Michael to the 31. Gonna be he's gonna and five. he's gonna wake up tomorrow and uh, I'm not sure he's gonna feel like a teenager no <laughs> <laughs> he has absorbed a lot of hits in the middle of the line tonight, and he's delivered some from the nose guard position. Oh. Pitch to the outside, looking for the sideline in the corner and unable to find it. The pitch to number two, Clayton Whitaker. Was Whitaker, and this is going to set up a fourth down play and a decision a for Morton. The clock is ticking, under six we're minutes under, to go. We're yeah. under six, you almost think the Potters with needing two scores and the way they've been scoring tonight have to go for them. And you know, you, hopefully they convert, convert and continue on because if not, they're leaving Pekin with a very short field to work with. Fourth and three, see if maybe we can uh, draw them offside with the cadence but no it's a quick snap it's a give left side fighting for every yard as Michael I believe he got it on second effort he was hit initially where he would have been stopped but where the ball is sitting right now unless they move it back considerably they have not that's a first down carry for Andrew Michael glad to see the Potters make it there for any number of reasons you see that kind of a, a you can call it gutsy, you can call it necessary, whatever, but oftentimes when those things don't convert, you know, things don't play out in the in the box score the way the game actually ended up. If, if Pekin punched it in on a short field there, you wouldn't realize the, the circumstances behind it, but the Potters convert, and we don't worry about that. We pass left side. That one's going to be dropped by a would-be interceptor, Julian Hill. Hill uh, had uh, a lot of green in front of him, and I think he was looking at that rather than the ball. Uh, that was an off-balance throw from Tucker Anderson. I think he would have liked to head back, and he's probably very thankful that Julian Hill did not take that one to the house the other way. I don't think his intended receiver was even aware he's being thrown to yeah. as well. Yeah, I think uh, Tucker... Got a little off balance there and uh, hurried himself a little bit. Pressure was coming as well, too. Yeah, he was Yeah, he was off balance for a reason. <laughs> Second and ten for the Potters. That one looked like he was wanting to hand off to somebody who wasn't there. He makes a little something out of nothing. It's third and eight after a two-yard pickup from Anderson. The Potters with under five minutes to play, trailed by two touchdowns. And you have to believe we'll see the ball in the air on a long third and eight. But anywhere on the field is four down territory for the Potters at this point in time as the clock continues to tick. Anderson fakes the handoff, fakes the pass. He's going to go right side looking for. <laughs> he was looking for Kevin Smith. He found Connor Eubanks. Connor Eubanks batted it down. Uh, is what I'm going to say. Yeah, I was going to say that. I think he tried to catch it. Uh, uh, Pekin with a couple of interception drops. Yeah. Uh, so the Potters still have life, clinging to life on fourth and eight at the 40 yard line, trailing by two scores, 4 14 remaining. So a great-sized crowd here at the game. Pekin traveling well, filled up the 
Bleachers on the other side. There's a long pass, separation, and a catch and touchdown. Great play, great pass. That was good coverage. That was just a very fine catch from Clayton Whitaker and a good delivery from Tucker Anderson. And the Potters have life on a 60-yard touchdown pass. They have closed to within one score with just over four minutes to go. And you look back to those two dropped interceptions. Absolutely. Absolutely. If the Potters can get a turnover here, Pekin will be, uh, this is the sort of thing that gives a coach gray hair. Whitaker's sixth touchdown of the season, his fourth or excuse me, third receiving. The extra point right down the middle. We are within a touchdown here. The Potters will not go away. It was a gorgeous throw. It Still was a over very there. pretty ball. It was uh, it delivered right where it needed to be. The cover was coverage was actually pretty good. Yeah. Uh, Whitaker just doing a little bit of hand fighting created some separation and and hauled it in. It took me a minute to realize he'd actually caught it because there was the hand fighting going on. But uh, just a, a good pitch and catch from Anderson to Whitaker on that one. There's the term in the NFL that quarterbacks have to throw their receivers open, and I think that's exactly what Tucker Anderson did there. He led his receiver, and Caleb Wigger was able to go out and catch that. He gave him the opportunity to make the play and was not disappointed. Now, you ask yourself, will the Potters try a different form of onside? Will they just kick away and hope the defense can do the job? Um, They have another kind of onside kick in their arsenal they want to try. And they are bunched up. That doesn't mean they won't separate. A lot of teams start in this formation. And they do. But judging by the way Bailey's dressing the ball, I think they're going to try an onside to the left side. And that one, unfortunately, takes a high bounce directly into the hands of Jesse Gelmar. Nobody within five yards of him when he caught that ball. You want that ball to pop off the turf. It just didn't pop high enough. It was more of a line drive. So Pekin with excellent field position. You don't blame the Potters for trying that there. They've been struggling to stop Pekin defensively, as have many teams Pekin's playing. But unfortunately, that one just took a peak and friendly hop so the Potters will need to go to work defensively four minutes remaining and I don't think we'll see anything but this from Pekin handoff straight forward to the all conference running back Number nine, Sebastian Fuller, Fuller across midfield. he is good for about yard line. five Dean yards Fuller. on that carry Second down and, six and the clock Pekin. runs Very much a factor at this point in time, Dylan, especially with the running game that, that Pekin has. You know, you have to believe that Pekin feels pretty good about where they're at. Obviously disappointed with the long touchdown, but Potters really need to try to force a turnover here. It's on the front seven now. they got to stop both Julian Hill and get a, helmet, yeah, get a helmet on the ball. Good penetration by the defensive front seven there. Although uh, also a nifty escape move out of the backfield to get back to the line of scrimmage. One yard on the play. It's third down Fuller and five basically right back where that one started from. Third and five for the Dragons. We are under three minutes to play. We have ten seconds on the play clock. Pekin doesn't appear to be in a hurry but very cognizant of the time. Do a good job of getting the snap off just in time with a second to spare. We got a knee down. Potter's catching a break there. A little slip in the backfield. Now we have fourth down, and Pekin has a decision to make. Do you trust your defense? Potter's call timeout. They don't want any more time coming off the clock. 2.26 remaining in this one. 
Uh, Potter's proving on that last drive they can throw the long ball and score in a hurry if need be. Uh, their drives, for the most part, been methodical and, and had been kind of slow up until that that long pass was successful. But uh, we still very much have a ball game with 2.26 to go. And now if you're Pekin head coach Doug Nutter, you're thinking, you know, you're right by midfield. It's fourth down. You don't want to try and go for it because, you know, it's a touchdown game. You know, take the safe round punt or gamble and go for it and try to close this game out with a first down. Well, first down now would be uh, a backbreaker, but, I, you know, boy, going for it would be an awfully gutsy call at this point in time. It looks like they're going to send Gozeman out to punt. Jared Kreider scrambles back for the Potters. We're going to have a flag thrown. And I think the Potters have too many men on the field as I see them checking the count. You would have thought he'd have counted before he threw the flag. Maybe he'll pick it up if he finds himself to be mistaken. He does pick it up. Are they going to march off a penalty? That is, in fact, a call. Potters with one too many on the field. Boy, you're just thankful. Now, does that change anything? Exactly. And That's it just does point. change. Gozeman's coming off the field. Bacon's trying to figure out what they're going to do, but you went from fourth and nine to fourth and four. We're talking about a team that's been picking up yards and chunks. Although we'll see if they. Uh, the penalty is fourth down and three for Bacon from the Morton They send Nick Campbell back out. They want to finish this right now. Although Campbell could still punt this ball. He's done that once already in this game, and we're going to have another flag. I don't know if we're setting any records tonight, but <laughs> we, we may be setting them for flag strong. And just flags, I mean, that one just coming at a weird time. We're not close to the snap. We're not They're picking that one up and waving it off. He just Felt like he hadn't thrown one in a while. <laughs> the last thing in the world the Potters want right now is a five-yard penalty because that gives Peek in a first down and pretty much puts this game on ice. Uh, a snap and punt. Uh, just the benefit. That's going to bounce straight up in the air. It's going to eventually get a peak and bounce. It's going to settle at the 10, and the, punt is down at the 10 and the Potters yard. have two minutes and 15 seconds yards on the pick. to the first and 10 work to with and 90 yards to go. Line. Oh yeah, they're gonna have to work for it, but this game is definitely in reach. Just a touchdown down. Yeah, I just admire the, the uh, persistence that they've shown, they're just not giving up and down two scores a couple times and just continue to battle back. They will work from the left hash. A couple receivers split right. He's looking right. He throws right. And stumbling forward four first down yards. Clayton Whitaker, he looked like he's lost his footing there. Out to the 21, moving the chains will stop the clocks temporarily. It's a great extra effort there by Whitaker just to get the first down. He lost his balance in early going there. He just couldn't quite get, oh, and that ball's bouncing around. That's a hate to see. Uh, Potters, no turnovers last week, no turnovers tonight yet, and now would be a terrible time for one. They were able to we jump back on that one, lost five. Line. At this juncture, they need to be in a big hurry to be getting plays going. That was just Tucker Anderson trying to do a pump fake there, and it just kind of slipped out of his hand. Luckily, he fell back on it. He's going to go left side, too high for Evan Heal, I believe was the intended receiver there. Hey, 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 
We are under a minute and a half to go. But the Potters need 14 yards in these next two downs or the clock is immaterial. Andrew Michael coming off the field, so this is almost certainly going to be a pass or a creative way to get the ball to Whitaker. Whitaker comes out of the backfield, runs up the middle of the field. Pass goes left side short. Pick up for just four or five yards. That was Heel, I believe, the receiver. On the far left side. Call that a gain at six or seven. That leaves the Potters with fourth and eight. Going to be fourth down and eight from the 23. Fourth and eight from the 23 yard line. Potters need this. They've got it. And the drive stays alive. This one is not over yet. That pass complete to Ben Watts. Good for a first down. And there's, a, there's that boy, sorry to cut you off, but Tucker Anderson, fourth down, deep in zone territory. Finds the open receiver, and this game's still alive. The clock very much a factor at this point in time. We've got a flag down. The pass is complete to the outside and midfield. And we'll see if that was a free play or if it's coming back. Plenty of laundry on the field tonight. To say the least. One oh five remaining. The Potters don't seem to be too concerned with moving back. Still waiting for the official. And the Potters are coming back. I believe that was a false start, but kind of odd to let that play go through. Well, kind of exactly right. You Typically on an offensive false, false start, start you're going to get a whistle to even keep the play from happening. And that, so I thought maybe they were going to call offsides on the defense, and that was a free play for Morton. So there's a reason that the Bombers were lined up uh, out near where the play ended. They're thinking, well, why don't you just blow the whistle if we jumped? And now that takes time off the clock, too, with that free play. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that probably was a cost the Potter five or six seconds because he didn't blow the whistle. And those are precious seconds at this point in time. That pass is complete and doing a good job of catching that ball. Pass complete, was number six, Austin Dudiak. Austin Dudiak kind of stumbled as that ball was six. coming out, was able to rein it in. We're going to have time out for the Potters as the clock now at 47 seconds. And I think uh, if they've got some kind of a creative play to get somebody open downfield, I think uh, now is the time we're going to see that call. I'm loving the passing game we're seeing here late in the fourth quarter. They've really been effective with it, but we just haven't seen it consistently throughout the game. It's been all about Andrew Michael and... Uh, Clayton Whitaker on the ground for most of this game. Well, it's been entertaining. Could do without a lot of the flags, but it, it has been entertaining. It's going to be interesting to... Uh, Watch these last 47 seconds. See if the Potters can pull another rabbit out of the hat. Back to pass, that's a long one downfield. It is picked off by Mason Carr. 6'1", 200-pound 
defensive back, also a reserve quarterback, so he's got good hands. He pulls that one in, and that's going to end the Potters' comeback bid. Um, it would have been a you know very hard-fought game. Nothing left to do at this point in time for Pekin, but take a knee a couple times. There's a lot of white jerseys in the area he threw to, and uh, his car was able to get up there and pick that one off and effectively end the game. And this is the favorite formation for a coach to call, the victory formation. They'll just take a knee once or twice, and we'll send everybody home. Um, and a good game for the Potters. I mean, they certainly uh, don't need to hang their heads. They hung with a very tough Pekin team. And uh, this one went down to the wire. Dylan, I want to thank you for uh, filling in uh, this evening. Appreciate it. And I wish you the best of luck with your continued studies. I, I imagine we may see you again. Hopefully so. Um, hope, you, uh, hope you enjoyed it as well. Fantastic game. And that is the end of the final game. Four, Pekin, Our final Pekin 35, Morton 28. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on our broadcast this evening. On behalf of the MPTV crew and Dylan Corbett, this is Brian Gordon. Thanks again for joining us, and have a good night.